Hello everybody. Welcome back to the channel where we talk about stuff. So I don't really know how to begin this, so I'm just going to start talking. Uh, one of the core things I would say about this channel, at least over the last year and a half as the news has begun to like really push itself out there, is that there's not a lot of Bitcoin left. You've heard me say it before, <clears throat> and I've even seen like the skepticism in the in the comment section because the core belief is that if Bitcoin is actually being bought up, well, why isn't the price moving? Why isn't the price higher? Why aren't things skyrocketing like a number of other analysts have been saying or claiming for a very long time? The really weird part is that um, regardless of the news that we might get, or even finding out that a large portion, a large portion of the purchases of Bitcoin are actually happening OTC over the counter. Uh, it doesn't really enter into the consciousness of a lot of people that that Bitcoin isn't on a cryptocurrency exchange. And therefore, we would not see any movement of price as the accumulation is actually happening. Ergo, when we see or hear that some companies are buying, they tend to actually do so in their own volition on a cryptocurrency exchange. And we see the gigantic movement. We get the whale news that the purchase has happened. And then we end up seeing the price went up. We hear a day later that they bought the coins and we're like, oh, okay, that makes a lot of sense. It gets to like a lot of people. I don't know why I'm doing this. Like, 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 like a bit jumpy in some sort of way. They go, well, if the price rose because they bought, we also now have to buy as well. And this begins the cycle of the price going up until that hype begins to fade down. No one really cares for some reason anymore than micro strategy bought 14,000 Bitcoin over the course of a 30 day period. And then we have to wait for the next like hypey thing to actually take place. <clears throat> a lot of this accumulation takes time. The news that we've received over the course of the last once again, year and a half or two years, is that not only is accumulation happening, but it tends to be happening in like short stints. So we know that there are people in New York, in Dubai, in Miami, in Singapore, in Tokyo, who are buying like large amounts of Bitcoin. And, 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 I, and, and I would even lower that to like a Bitcoin at any given transaction. But when you hear that these people or you see that these wallets are accumulating large amounts of Bitcoin, it doesn't really have that same kind of pop as hearing that a company bought 14,000 Bitcoin, irrespective of the idea that there would only ever be a maximum of 21 million Bitcoin with four to six million lost and gone forever. Lost addresses, lost wallets, lost passwords, lost private keys, you name it. <clears throat> it's all happened. This is why you should have like copies of copies of things written down and inside of safes if you have a safe or some place that you consider safe. That's the generalized idea. So if we continue to get news over and over that even more so, I think I made a video on this. This was a couple of weeks ago. There's a person on Twitter. I don't remember their handle name. It's something like Bitcoin buying spree. It's not that, but it has like one of those like kind of like gimmicky kind of things. And this guy basically scours through uh, the blockchain and transactional records uh, to see what's happening. He noticed, I mean, nearly on a daily basis, <clears throat> There are all these new wallets that are popping up and these wallets are buying daily. <clears throat> Some of them are buying around like nine Bitcoin per day. And then you go nine Bitcoin per day and then it goes nine Bitcoin per day. And then he shows the chart and like after like about a couple of weeks, he's like, they have over 150 Bitcoin and no one's paying attention to this address. It's those kind of things. If this keeps happening over and over and over, of course, it's going to have a substantial effect on the price. Or if these people are smart enough, they buy during like the down periods where no one's really paying attention. If you buy over the same period where MicroStrategy just bought and everyone knows that they just bought a huge amount of Bitcoin, where well, you're kind of buying into the price going up and then it's going to settle back down when a lot of the hype has once again dissipated. So a lot of these larger wallets or even smaller wallets, dare I say, are buying Bitcoin <clears throat> On a near daily basis. We had one before. I think it was buying 50 Bitcoin per day. Like these are huge purchases. Like you can see them on his Twitter. Like we know that they're actually happening. And this person isn't the only one who's covering these transactions as they're happening. But he's the one that kind of popped into my head. This brings me to the idea of what we've been talking about once again for the last 18 to 24 months on this channel. And the amount of accumulation. Sorry if I'm talking too fast. The amount of active accumulation that's happening within the space. 
no matter how many times I might scream or talk about it or rant or rave or have crazy videos about the actual levels of accumulation, I don't think that it doesn't do anything for people, but I think it's more of a, it, it almost becomes like news. I, I think we become lightly desensitized to the idea of the crazy accumulation and the crazy things that are currently taking place. For instance, when I got into the, when I was looking at the crypto market around 2016, I got into it around the end of 2016, beginning of 2017. That's when I was becoming like more serious in the market. When we heard that there could potentially be a bank, one, who was thinking of getting into the cryptocurrency space, Bitcoin's price pumped. It drove everyone wild. We were like, oh my gosh, I can't believe that an institution would even think of touching Bitcoin. This is absolutely crazy. When we had news that there would potentially be a or two governments on the planet who were looking at Bitcoin in a more positive light, they weren't talking about banning it, Bitcoin's price went up. The entire idea had always been that governments would eventually adopt Bitcoin, but the fact in 2017 that we already got news that it might be happening then, as opposed to the year 2032, was like, whoa, what's happening? Bring us to 2024, and we know that there are multiple countries who are mining Bitcoin. They're adding it to their national treasuries and stuff like that. A lot of countries who are under sanctions are using Bitcoin to trade amongst themselves. A lot of countries are talking about adopting Bitcoin as a form of legal tender. It's not just one bank who's into crypto. There are now hundreds, and I assumed stupidly, years ago when we got news that there were, I think it was over 300 banks just within Germany who were trying to update their banking charter paperwork stuff to be able to hold crypto. I was like, well, here we go. This is it. This is the moment everyone's been waiting for. But it, 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 it hit the ground flat because prices didn't skyrocket. So people will hear that this news is happening and they'll look at prices and go, well, it's not, it's not reflected in the price. Like we're not at $9 million per coin. And then they turn and walk the other way. It's only, only, only usually when uh, prices go up really fast and too high for the average person to be able to buy any Bitcoin and or fragment Satoshis that they become interested. Well, why didn't you tell me about that news before? All of this was going on this entire time. You wouldn't believe how many times I've heard that from friends and family who are all usually saying this exact thing. I get messages later on. <clears throat> When Bitcoin, when XRP, when Cardano, when Ethereum have pumped, that's when they want to get into the market, not me making YouTube videos every single day. That didn't uh, catch them to the entire thing. Anyway, the dragging it on back, getting off course here. The amount of accumulation, for those of you who don't know, you should all know this. Uh, the United States now has a spot physical uh, Bitcoin ETFs, exchange traded funds. These are funds who buy Bitcoin based off of the amount of demand that there is from clients behind the scenes who are eager to acquire Bitcoin in a regulated, securitized way. Sure, why not? The thing is, is that the market was waiting for these for a very long time. Part two is that upon hearing that these were released, that we had them, everyone expected what everyone expected, that prices would go up immediately. Prices began to fall over the course of a two-week two, two week period, somewhere around the time that we got all of these ETFs, and a lot of people were disappointed, trying to figure out why. They assumed that there was something, something amiss, something's wrong, something's going on, why wouldn't Bitcoin's price be pumping? And then we found out that there's a company called Grayscale, uh, who was actually selling off their Bitcoin. And people were like, shenanigans, what's happening? The issue was is that Grayscale um, didn't before have an ETF. They had a trust. And their trust basically mimicked the idea of an ETF and that they were buying Bitcoin on behalf of clients. <clears throat> However, upon seeing that a number of other companies had received ETFs, a lot of people no longer wanted the trust. So they began to sell their Bitcoin that was in the trust that had a higher uh, management fee and began to move that money over to uh, BlackRock and Fidelity and other companies, which leads us exactly to where we currently are right now. Over the course of 
<clears throat> Jeez Louise, what's happening today? Over, I'm like, over the course, over the course of the last couple of week, 10 days, somewhere around there, <clears throat> we've gotten the numbers. And the numbers are very important to me because they show what, what's happening in the world. We found out that while Grayscale was selling, they were actually selling to cryptocurrency exchanges. For some reason, Logic didn't enter their head and they were selling directly on Coinbase, which is why we saw the downward pressure in the price, because we started to see the actual weight or amount of Bitcoin on Coinbase going up. If there's too much of a supply, the price goes down. Supply and demand, that's how it works. However, at the exact same time, <clears throat> What I found that no one was really talking about is that we started to hear exactly how much cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, uh, the spot ETF holders were also accumulating as well. So we first got wind that I believe they had accumulated around 15,000 Bitcoin. And then we heard news that they had around 24,000. And then we didn't hear anything for days. And then it became 55,000. Keeping in mind, these are nine companies. Over the course of a week or so, they had accumulated 55,000 Bitcoin. And then that number became 75,000. Then it became 93,000. And the, the big shebang number that everyone heard was that these nine companies are holding over 100,000 Bitcoin. And I remember making a video. I don't think it was here. I'm pretty sure it was on the other channel, my, my, my daily news channel, The Modern Investor. Hello, everyone. Um, and I told everyone, I was like... <clears throat> You understand that they, they bought half as much Bitcoin as MicroStrategy, the company who's like always accumulating. MicroStrategy has been buying since around 2017, 2018. They bought more in two and a half, three weeks than MicroStrategy had been accumulating over the course of the last four, five, and or six years. Couple of weeks. That number then ballooned quite quickly, and I have the exact numbers right here. Um... It says, where, where, where does it say that? I'm looking for words and I cannot find them. Wait, wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. Wait for it. I had the numbers on the screen. That's the weirdest thing in the entire world. Yes, here we go. The point is, um, after that 100,000 Bitcoin that they had all accumulated over the course of that same amount of time, these companies are now holding, have a combined total of... 151,006 Bitcoin since the first trading day, which was, I believe, the 11th or 12th of January. Therefore, it's only been about a good three or something in half weeks, somewhere around there. The, I don't want to say the issue, the, 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 the interesting part is that um, based off of numbers, if they continue with this level of accumulation, <clears throat> these companies alone would then probably hold or have accumulated the near entirety of liquid Bitcoin. The liquid Bitcoin being, if we only will ever have 21 million and 19 million have been mined already, four to six million Bitcoin are lost and gone forever. We know that around, I think it's 84, 87% of the entire supply that could be moving around is not moving. It's, it's, it's stable. It's stuck somewhere. It's people who have been buying, putting it into accounts, putting it onto ledgers and kind of just leaving it there. It is believed that the amount of liquid movable, tradable Bitcoin is roughly between 1 to 1.4 million Bitcoin. We get these numbers from Glassnode and Santiment and all these other companies who look through the chain to see when coins are accumulated and how often they move. It is usually deemed that if a, if a wallet has been holding a coin for more than six months, plus longer, they're probably not day traders. They're probably accumulators. We can also see this by people who are buying and not selling. If the address only has inflows and no outflows, these people are buying and holding for the long term. 
The other issue is, is that the liquid coins, uh, the 1 to 1.4 million, we can see them on cryptocurrency exchanges. The problem is, as I've mentioned before, is that a lot of people aren't looking to sell. There are a lot of people who have their coins in multiple different places, maybe even multiple different cryptocurrency exchanges, simply because they literally don't want all their eggs in one basket. They're going to put them in different places as a just in case that exchange falls or this happens or this goes missing. They have like, you know, multiple different fail safes. So then that gets us to the number of anywhere between 400 to 600,000 Bitcoin, a good 50% split down the middle, is actually liquid and or available for 8 billion people on the planet. These are the numbers I'm talking about that doesn't really like pew pew, like send off anything else in anyone's head except for, I'm, 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 I'm sure there's someone else out there who's talking about it. But it's more of a, I'm always shocked that it's not more spoken about. If the actual movable liquid amount of Bitcoin that's available for 8 billion people before we've even gotten to the next halving, and for those of you who don't know, the halvings are going to continue until the year 2140. If nine companies have accumulated 151,000 Bitcoin in less than a month, if they continue with that same level of accumulation, by the time we get to the halving, they will have accumulated all the liquid Bitcoin that's available for 8 billion people. And then you sit there and go, well, what about the other people who've also been buying? Yeah, don't forget, MicroStrategy is still buying, as is every other company out there as well who's been buying for a while. Even if they collectively only were buying 100, 200, 300 Bitcoin per day or per week amongst themselves, that still takes a lot more off the market. And one of the really crazy things is that we always just have a whale discussion. Whale discussions are the only things that we have within the cryptocurrency space. It's just whales. It's just rich people. It's just like the really like the billionaires. How much are the billionaires buying? And then you go, normal people are also buying. I've seen people in the comment section for years talking about that they do a DCA, they dollar cost average, and that maybe once a month, every you know every two weeks, they put three hundred into the market. They buy three hundred worth of Bitcoin. Three hundred worth of Bitcoin. Multiply that, <clears throat> if we're expected to have over 100 million people who are into the Bitcoin market right now, let's do the lowest figure possible. And let's say that we have 100,000 people out of the 100 million who are doing that bi-weekly, who are maybe even only buying a million Satoshis at any given time. That's also Bitcoin that's also being taken off the market. What about new people? We also got news about new wallets a couple of, maybe two weeks ago, that apparently there was one day. So normally we see around like five to 10,000 new Bitcoin addresses, which is insane to think about, that five to 10,000 new people every single day are entering the market, even buying fragments of Bitcoin, $50 of Bitcoin. It all adds up again at some point. Not to mention that one day we saw that there were over 100,000 new wallet addresses who had entered the market who were also buying Bitcoin. Like these are, and, and I hate the term, they're called non zero addresses. I hate the term. It's basically wallets that don't have a zero balance. So they're non zero. That means that they have Bitcoin inside of them. They were activated, they were created, they have Bitcoin. 100,000 new ones in one day. Add up all that accumulation together. Add up the fact that, not even daring to mention the the price predictions that we've gotten, because I know a lot of them are very like galactic. They're like they're whew, they're out there at this point. For those of you who've missed it, maybe the other videos, maybe on the other channel, uh, the general consensus right now amongst Tor de Miser, Samston Mao, Kathy Wood, Novogratz, uh, Raul Pal, you name it, the list literally goes on and on and on and on. It's about 20 people who we hear in the news every couple of days. They say that according to their charts, they're seeing that they believe that by the end of this year, this year, we will be anywhere between a 120 to a 150, 60,000 dollar Bitcoin. During the 2025 bull run, they're expecting the pendulum to be swinging anywhere between $300,000 to $600,000 per Bitcoin. And I personally have sat there and I was like, these people sound, what is this on my shirt? Is that food? Was I just eating?
Anyway, the 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 thing that gets me is that when you hear the six hundred thousand, you go that that sounds a little that sounds a little insane. And then you add up all the numbers and you look at the accumulation of these nine companies, one hundred and fifty one thousand in less than a month. By the time wait, February, March, April, I think it's supposed to be the middle of April, they would have then over half a million Bitcoin. Just those nine companies. That's not also considering, for those of you who, who didn't know, uh, the other ones are also still, still buying as well. Very weird. That's why I told you at the beginning of this video, I didn't know where to start. I was just going to talk and eventually I, I would get there. Um, we've gotten to the point of complete madness. And, and then you wonder why the prices aren't moving. That's the main point. Why prices aren't moving it's because these companies are buying OTC. They're buying over the counter. They're not buying directly from Coinbase and they're like buy and sell feature. They're talking to companies and they're finding ways to accumulate this cryptocurrency that is actually liquid for them to be able to hold and procure for people who are actually in the ETF. So their buying literally does almost zero for the actual price the interesting part is, it's the supply crunch that comes after it. As we always get closer to the halving, always, sorry for punching my own hand, as we always get closer to the halving, what ends up happening is, is that it ends up getting into the normal news, the everyday mainstream news, and people begin to hear about it. Bitcoin's price moves up organically because a lot of people who are in the market realize what's going on, that there's literally going to be half as much Bitcoin created every single day. The price ends up going up. But what we've seen before during lighter, this is de definitely lighter compared to this, supply crunches is that any buy order has a significant amount of movement on the price. Imagine, riddle me this, Let's say there's 600,000, I'll give you 700,000 Bitcoin that's actually liquid and left for 7, 8 billion people on the planet. Now, let's say these nine companies over the course of that time have accumulated half a million of what's actually liquid. There's 200,000 left for 100 million people who are actually in the market. And the, also the new ones who are going to be entering over the course of an 18-month period as they also want to make some new money as well. What happens to the price when there's only 200 left? 200,000 left for 100 million people who are actually in the market. And that won't, like these nine companies aren't then going to stop buying. They're not going to go, wait, guys, we got enough. Let everyone else have some. They will only keep on buying and buying up huge amounts. They're buying now more than is actually being mined per day. Like, multiple folds over. Very interesting time to be in the market. Uh, it was expected for a while that this is actually, um, how do I say this? The analysts, multiple S's, and the people who've been looking at the charts for a while have always said that even in general, 2024 would be a very crazy year for the market. And then you add into these nine companies, you add into the fact that Bitcoin's the next three halvings are going to be quite sensational in that we will have mined, I believe, by the, the third one. I think we will have mined over 99 or 98% of all Bitcoin that will ever be. And it'll take us another 100 years to mine the last 1%. If you get a chance to like, find a chart for it, it's called um, the Bitcoin issuance rate chart. It's going to blow your mind. And this is why I speculated for a while why these companies got into Bitcoin now. Why now? Like, I think they also know that it's meant to be something big and, you know, tremendous, what have you. I don't think their entrance into the market is, 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 is happenstance. They were just like, I think we should really, no, no, no. Like, I think they all know exactly what's going on. Anyway, yeah, very interesting times ahead. Uh, we will most certainly be getting more news about this over the course of the next couple of weeks as they tend to accumulate more. The next time that it'll probably really make it into the news is when they have over 200,000. But I assume that's going to be in a couple days if they have over 151,000 already. Think of how much Bitcoin that they hold, just these companies. Anyway, yeah.
Um, I do hope you've all enjoyed. As always, the articles will be down in the description below. I do hope you all enjoyed. Hope you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.